Good morning, Jesse. Uh, it's probably afternoon by you. It's just cold, just short of 10 o'clock here on Monday. And I think we're pretty well set at this point. Uh, I had a couple of issues. I kind of want to go through them. But first off, I want to go through the what we have here on the machine. I'm all alone today, so I'm behind the camera instead of in front. I know you missed my smiling face. Uh, first off... Let's uh, go through the control just a little bit. We have a controller here. I'll keep it that way. It has an on-off power switch. It's got a brush off and on. Turn the brush on and the brush is turned. And it's got a feed off and on. That's for the feed mechanism up here. The feed that I have is a grizzly on for the horsepower. And it's adjustable in and out and up and down so that you can adjust how close the wheels are to the roller, okay? I had a couple of issues. Let me originally turn that off just so it's just a little bit quieter uh, while we talk a little bit. I had a couple of issues that, um, that and that's why it took so long to get finished. Uh, originally, all right, so what we have here is a drive motor and a belt and a belt tensioner and two pulleys that rotate the two brushes. So one of the things that I wasn't all pleased with first is we want to be able to move. So the, the boards come in from this end. We want to be able to move this back and forth, okay? so that we can accommodate different widths of board for one, um, but also so that the boards as they come across your big brush, don't always contact that big brush in the same spot and wear it down. Uh, so then you would get uneven wear on it. And as you got bigger boards through, the brush finish would be irregular. For a similar reason, I have these rotating mechanisms here, and the rotating mechanisms turn two screws, and they raise and lower the brushes in relation to the roller. So again, as a board comes through here, it doesn't always hit the brush, in exactly the same location, you can raise it and lower it. Basically from here, you can lower it. It's raised up the whole way. And with that, the boards as they go through, because I expect you're mostly going to be doing one by material, which is three quarter. So um, the original, so these guys slide back and forth now really nice and easy. And I put a little, I'll go up, up above here, T-handle on here. So you crank that T-handle and it clamps down on it and it doesn't move. So I've got two T-handles down below on those carriages. And what I originally had for those carriages were bushings. And the bushings move real smooth when they're on the rod here. But when you put them in an assembly, and you've got a little bit of ability to cock it back and forth, they just didn't work smooth. They binded, they made it difficult. I didn't like it. So I switched out to uh, linear bearings, much better setup, uh, it cost a little more, but it was, it was definitely worth it in my opinion. So the new setup's got linear bearings. Originally I had bushings, so I had to wait for those bushings to come. The other thing that happened was I originally put these bearings in place. Now on here, there's a through shaft, okay? The shaft has got a bearing at the top and a bearing at the bottom. You can't quite see it here because it's underneath this bushing or this uh, belt. Let me move this forward a little bit. You'll be able to see a little more, okay? And there's another one up above. Well, after I ran it for a while, one of these guys, this one right here, the seal on it just blew up. 
and it started making noise and I didn't like it. So I replaced these bearings, which are supposed to be good for quarter horsepower and uh, 6,000 RPM. Uh, I replaced them with larger bearings. So now I have standard flange mounted bearings. There's one on the top right under here and there's one on the bottom. Let's see if we can see that right there. So I've got four flange mount bearings that are now supporting, which was a half inch shaft. It's now a three quarter inch shaft. So I completely remade that whole assembly in there. And that's, that's what took me the extra time. All right, so uh, getting parts, making a prototype, making it work, and then running it for a period of time just to make sure that everything was okay. So now we have, uh, we started with the electrical controller. Uh, two other things. Uh, I mentioned this before, but we have here, okay, we have here, let me put it down on the floor. Sorry about that. Okay, we have two of these puppies, okay? And these, you're gonna mount right here, okay, there and there. You're gonna mount those to the rails of your current brush machine. And they've got a pair of them, so you got a left and a right. Here's the right. Okay, so that you're gonna line up because now we have two side brushes. So I have to align the board to the side brushes. So you're gonna line up the board. So a group of boards are gonna go through the machine in one location or another, across your big brush. They'll exit that brush. And as I mentioned before, this guy here, I left bolts in, the, uh, in your package. This guy gets bolted to the end of your current frame. I've got a shipping bracket here. Gets bolted to the end of your current frame. So this frame here on the top surface is one with your current brush, okay? So you're gonna line up the boards with these guys coming into your current brush machine. It'll go across the brush, it'll come out of there, and then we've got two alignment brackets here. So these slide left and right. They've got a hand crank on them here so you can tighten them up and they stay nice and snug, okay? And they make sure, I should have lined that up properly. They make sure that the board, I'm looking straight down the inside here, the board then comes through here, down here, and hits that brush. You don't want it to hit the brush too hard. The brush is only has bristles that are three quarters of an inch long. You don't want to crash into the dust collector shroud. And actually you don't want to brush too hard anyway. You want to give it a light brush. You give this a real hard brush and this is a similar bristle to what your other brush is. It's a um, uh, abrasive impregnated nylon brush. Uh, I will send along the box. This is the box that it came in so that it's easily replaceable. You can see it's Porter cable. These are about $35 a piece. There's four of them on here. Uh, I'm not sure how long they'll last, but they, they should last a good while. In order to replace them, you have to take the shroud off. There's two bolts here, a bolt and a bolt, you take those bolts off, the shroud will come off. There's two bolt heads on the top and on the shaft on the bottom, it's machined in place, two little nubs that align this. It's got the, um, the square drive kind of thing on the bottom. So it goes into that properly and then the thread holds it on. Uh, fairly simple arrangement. So these guys can go back and forth these guys here go back and forth. The drive itself goes back and forth, so it can go pretty close to the middle. The shrouds are pretty close to the drive over here, but um, you're not going to hit it because if you're hitting it, then you're 
um, you're over too far anyway. All right, and this basically, these drives I found worked best if they rotate clockwise on this side, counterclockwise on that side, that tends to take the board from your brush and push it through here. This guy is the guy that keeps it at a steady state speed so that it's not shooting on through there. Um, in addition, the drive itself on this side, it's got a gearbox. One thing I am gonna tell you, I'm not gonna deliver it with oil in it because it'll spill all over and the shipping company doesn't like it. But there's a note on here, make sure that you fill the oil, okay, before you run it. You can actually get to it from this side over here, all right? Also, the gearbox, this is a gearbox here. So this is not a variable speed motor, but it is a gearbox. And if you take this off, and I give you the instruction sheet with this as well, of course, there are two gears in here, these two gears here. And if you wanna increase or decrease the speed, you can change those around. There's another set of gears that goes with it, an instruction sheet. It tells you uh, what the speed, in fact, right here, it tells you, uh, given basically uh, you're running on 60 Hertz with gear A as a six gear, it goes 20 feet a minute. So it goes from 20 feet all the way up to 43 feet per minute. Um, so you should be in good shape with that. All right. Um, if there's, uh, let's see, I'm going to put this together and then I'm going to run a board down through it with the vacuum. That's the other thing, the vacuum for this, what I found worked the best. I tried my bigger dust collector, but actually what works the best is a shop vac. So I hooked up a shop vac with two hoses here. Um, I am going to have to reposition those. I discovered this morning as I was playing around because I didn't have this on there before. I get When I want to lower this all the way, the hose is going to get in contact with this roller. So I'm going to have to raise these up. I'm going to put a plate, an adapter plate in here. But uh, regardless, uh, let me go ahead and uh, back off of this. You can, uh, I think I've shown you everything I need to. Um, I'm going to set it up to run a board. I have a burned board there. Uh, I'm going to run that through. And that'll be a, a second video. It'll take me another couple of minutes after I clean some of this stuff up.